Welcome back to Thionite Plays Dragon Quest IX. On the last episode, we made it back to the observatory. We got rid of Stella, however, temporarily. And we made it here after, unfortunately, regaining the services of Stella. We talked to a god, we talked about French onion soup and the visions heretofore granted by said soup, and we've given birth to a glowy blue tree. Lots of stuff happened. The context would be much more clear if you watched the, the last episode. I will say right off the bat, this is not a main episode. This is going to be a shorter episode because I only need to talk about a specific thing about Dragon Quest IX that has been unlocked by getting to this exact part of the game. And to show it off, to show it off very first quickly right now immediately, we got a new spell. If you remember in the last episode, the voice of God was like, here, you are now a cat. You can now zoom around everywhere instantaneously. We got a new spell only on your playable character because only your playable character is an immensely powerful Celestrian. This is the spell Zoom. Return instantly to previously visited towns and castles. This is essentially a portable chimera wing that never runs out and you can use it from wherever you want, whenever you please, as long as you're not indoors. I am going to go and use this spell to go back to Stornway because the the priority of this episode is to talk about something that has been unlocked in Stornway, specifically the inn, the Quester's Rest, even though it's the middle of the night, that doesn't matter because time waits for no man, because we need to introduce ourselves to a new NPC, a very brand new, amazing NPC that is the cause of no small amount of trouble, anguish, heartache, heartbreak, and heartaches. Because, like, the first heartache was, like, the metaphorical heartache. Like, oh, it's heart, I, my heart, my aching heart, no. But then the second one was just like, oh, I think I'm having heart palpitations. Those kind of heartaches. This is Selma. Well, hello. How lovely to meet you. I'm from the Syndicate of Pubs, Inns, and Taverns. My name is Selma. I'm here today to tell you all about DQVC, the fantastic shopping service we are now offering. First, you'll need to be able to connect to Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Then it's just a matter of, oh dear, I can see this is all a little confusing. Would you like to, would you like me to explain it a little more detail? Yes, please continue to sell me your product, Selma. I feel like if anyone is qualified to sell me anything, it would be someone with the word sell in their name. Sell my goods to me, Selma. Very wise. So let's see if I can't explain the process a bit more clearly. DQVC is a revolutionary shopping service which gives you direct access to a huge range of exclusive and often unique items. The product lineup is updated daily, <laughs> a huge asterisk, we'll get to that, with exciting new goods, but don't you worry, the prices always stay the same. Incredible. And along with the latest lineup, every time you connect, you'll be updated with the latest quest information too. Wow. Wow indeed. There. Is it all a bit clearer now, my dear? Would you like for me to run through it one more time? No, I am good. A word of warning. Once I've connected you, I'll have to update your adventure log. Uh, you just save the game before you connect. I'm going to hold off on it for a moment because I want to talk about it. No, I don't want to connect right now. Very well. Thank you for stopping by. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day. Right. This is the very first point in the game where this opens up. Once you get to All Trade Zabby or, you know, have the zoom spell, whatever quest flag that technically counts in the game's files. Uh, this is what opens up. And essentially, this is how Nintendo, when this game was new, in ye forgotten days of 2010, 2011, whenever this was actually going on, uh, this was how they disseminated and provided access to DLC quests, extra content, all of that kind of wonderful things that you would have been able to gain access to if, of course... The Nintendo Wi-Fi connection was still existing. That went down ho oh, oh, many, many years ago. Nothing about this is possible to be connected to normally. However, luckily for fans of the game, there are two fan-run servers that allow you to connect to the Wi-Fi for Dragon Quest IX and receive all of the bonuses. And the first thing that is mainly of note that Selma briefly alluded to is new 
extra quests. And if I can take a quick moment to go into miscellaneous, not miscellaneous, if I can take a quick moment to go, oh no, she's back, oh god. If I go into my quest list, then you may see right now it's just normal quest list. It says pretty plain and simple right at the top, normal quest list. We only have these ones because we've only done two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and ten. But I want everyone to be aware that there are no other options at that screen at the moment. Keep that in mind. The next thing to talk about is the exclusive items. DQVC is a riff on the infomercial and televised shopping service QVC which is just a real world, like, call in and buy this for $19.99, two easy installments, and you can get a second one free, that type of stuff, that's QVC. Dragon Quest QVC, or DQVC, it's the same thing in-game. It's an online shopping service that is now defunct because they shot the online services in the head. But luckily, um, I can still do it. Well, you too, as well, can do it. I... I, I will say this, this is going to be like a really short kind of truncated video about the topic. I just want to do like a surface level talk, talk about this on the surface level. I can't do words today, apparently. Like a little, a tiny bit of inspiration, information, I really can't do words today, about this topic because it is unlocked and I want to talk about it at least briefly. Uh, in the future, near a long time from now, near the end of the series probably, I'm going to do a far, far more comprehensive explanation about all of the mechanics, how to connect it to the internet on, you know, console, even an emulator, whatever you want to do. It'll be way more comprehensive. It'll be a guide. It'd be thorough explanation about all of the items, etc., all the benefits, everything about the DQVC. I'll make a video about it. But for right now, just, uh, like I said, little bit, little bit of information, piecemeal information, drop, drip by drop fed straight to your eye holes in your uh, technical lives. I don't know. Why am I bothering? Why am I bothering to do words? Selma, can you, can we just connect? I want to, I, I just want to connect. Yes, yes, please. Uh, once I've connected, I'll save your game. Yes, please. I would love to connect to the internet that barely exists. Connecting to Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Please wait a moment. Normally, this would just outright fail, but because I have done spe specific special magic, I really can't do words. Uh, we should be good. You have been disconnected. That's perfectly fine. I just needed it to have a second to connect, and now it's saving my game, which is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. That will canonize this as the main timeline. But like Selma said, and as is alluded to by the name DQVC, New quests are available, which is pretty fantastic, and a very special guest has arrived at the Quester's Rest. Also very good. I'll talk about them in a minute. But yes, this is DQVC, and this is what you would see if you had logged on to this about a decade ago when this was live. Hello and welcome to DQVC. We've got some great items for you today. Now, tell me, let me tell you all about our latest exciting news. This is the shop. I've got some very expensive things that I could potentially buy. The captain's coat, the surplice, the silver specs, the red afro, Santa's hat, and Santa's suit. Look at these things. Santa's suit. Jolly old Father Christmas's imitable outfit. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. The bright red hat that Santa Claus adores. These are items that, if you had enough money, you could technically buy. And I will say this. The DQVC was an online service that did have a shopping component and every week for about a year a little longer they had rotating weekly item selections so once every week uh, every week there would be a certain selection of items and through the course of that week it would rotate through those items every day until the next week rolled around and it would have uh, a new selection of items and over the course, there were special weeks where you could buy stuff like orbs. And if you're familiar with the end game, orbs are incredibly rare, extremely late game alchemy components. Uh, don't worry about them. We'll talk about everything about that later. But most of this stuff is able to be gotten in the game. But there are several pieces of equipment and items that are exclusive to DQVC. And that is a pain if you're of the completionist mind because you would only be able to get them from DQVC. And as a defunct service, it's a bit hard to do completionist stuff. So luckily for us, I do believe it would be possible using these fan rate, 
fan-run, fan-made services to get all of this stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to be going for 100%, but it's definitely within the realms of possibility. I believe the way the fan-made services work is they have they didn't get enough data when this was running to have every item that was ever released, but they did get the last two cycles, the last two weekly cycles, which allows you to get every unique exclusive item from the DQVC. So you can technically do 100%. Again, I'll have a later video down the line that covers all of this stuff way more comprehensively. I'm still doing a lot of research and development on that front. So again, this is just piecemeal, tiny bit of information. Suffice to say, uh, this is the kind of stuff you'll be able to get. Captain's Coat, Surplice, a lot of this stuff at the current moment when you immediately gain access right now wall pricey is extremely powerful because like right now the captain's coat alone a coat cut for cutlass wielding captains of considerable renown has a defense rating of 53 that would buff charles up from 40 to 90 from din it would buff him up to 69 to 111 this kind of stuff is a really good equipment if you want to grind for it and in an effort to make sure i get the exclusive stuff because I am fairly certain, well, I'm actually 100% certain because I have tested this, even if you connect to the fan-made servers, they do rotate the items. So for the foreseeable future, between episodes, I might come back to this particular shop to see if I can't get any of the exclusive items because I do want to make a concerted effort to see if I can get as close to 100% as possible. I really do want to make an effort to try at the very least. So getting money for this kind of stuff, might be a bit bothersome, but eventually, sooner than you might think, there are methods to make sure you have essentially infinite money if you're a bit patient. But we'll get to there in a bit. It revolves around alchemy. But yeah, essentially, weekly items, the last two weeks of the rotating items are essentially echoing for eternity in the DQVC, and you can buy them if you so wish. Connecting to it is a bit of a bother, and it might be a bit of a pain if you don't know what you're doing again i will make a comprehensive guide revolving around how to do it yourself but for right now you're gonna have to do your own research it's not terribly complicated if you can make your own hotspots on your phone's wi-fi or if you have an old router again do your own research for right now that's all i'm willing to go into because again i don't have every bit of knowledge that i would otherwise want to make the video but that is essentially uh, the, the drip-fed tiny bit of information that I wanted to talk about about the DQVC. And now I can circle back. I hope everyone remembers the, the fact that I pointed out the test list or the quest list. It's going to be on the test later on. But we're going back to it right now. Now that you it downloaded all of those extra quests, which is essentially Dragon Quest 9's, Dragon Quest 9's DLC. So if I go into the quest list... I now have an extra option. Before I connected to the internet, it just automatically brought me to the normal quest, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the bog basic standard in-game quests. But we now have another option, extra quests. And this is a lot more. This is quests 121 all the way to 184. These are essentially extremely late game to post game quest lines that are activated way later on as evidenced by the fact that you know it's in the triple digits for quests and we've barely cra cracked the double digits so again you don't really need to worry about these you're not going to have access to any of these all of these are essentially like can't currently accept this quest we are a million ways and years away it's dozens of episodes probably at the rate i'm going and yammering on about but yeah these are extra quests these are essentially the dlc quests that were released uh, weekly, monthly, they were meted out and given out over the Wi-Fi connection over the course of the game when this was new. So you can, if you can find a way to connect to DQVC through the fan-made servers, you can get all of the DLC without actually using stuff like an emulator or action replay or any other hacking device, which is good, which is very, very, very good. And I will gladly talk about more. We will be doing those side quests as well, 
because now that I do have them, I will eventually, of course, be doing it, because that is a lot of side content that I don't want to just shunt off to the side and not do, which is fantastic. The last point I want to talk about, because there were three main points, the, the extra DLC quests, the DQVC shop itself, and the third thing that Selma briefly mentioned, or it might have been a tutorial, is that we got extra guests, special guests even. That is an extra feature which is very special. This door is going to be useful later on and everything else. I'll also have another video detailing everything that's important about the Quester's Rest Inn, which is the building we're in now, Aaron's Inn, because these areas are roped off, but take my word for it, eventually we'll be able to get up there, but that's a video for another time because there's a lot of information about that. But the special guests, that is what this dude is for. This dude is the concierge for the lift for the royal suites. Perhaps you're unfamiliar with the royal suites, if I may be so bold as to offer a brief explanation, my good sir. Yes, please, regale me of your knowledge. I should be delighted, sir. Mm -hmm. So, the royal suites are reserved for our most exclusive guests. The room offer exquisite comfort and unbridled hospitality. Farewells are a part of life, you see. Even guests... Even guests one wishes would stay forever must at some point check out. Weird way to word that sentence, but you're the concierge, not me. But we hope that the luxury and lavishness of the royal suites will encourage such guests to linger that little bit longer. But someone of your stature is, of course, most welcome to visit them freely, sir. Thank you, my good sir. I will gladly go into these rooms. You may notice a lot of names. If you did not otherwise access the DQVC, the only option you would be able to see is this first one, the Royal Suite. It is essentially a, a very posh, luxurious room, but it is otherwise empty and there is no point to go there. But if you do go and connect to the DQVC, the Wi-Fi connection through the fan-made servers, again, all of this is through the fan-made servers, you will see four pages full of names that will only mean things to you if you have played past Dragon Quest titles. All of these uh, people are from past Dragon Quest games, and the way that they're ordered is essentially uh, the ones on the first page and then the second page, the third, the fourth, in that order, are essentially the earliest Dragon Quest games. So Prince Princeton's Room is this... I think he's a character from Dragon Quest 2? And then uh, Florette, all the way at the end of the thing, is from an unnamed Dragon Quest spin-off. So they're from more recent titles. But really, that's not important. All of these characters are playable and otherwise cool character. I'm fairly certain they're all playable characters from pressed Dragon Quest titles, which are interesting. I want to go to four specifically right now because I think it might be good. And I have a paper. Whoops, I didn't, I hope that didn't hit the mic. It doesn't matter. I have a paper with notes on where to go specifically. So the first one I want to go, since Din is of course the Magic Celestrian, I want to go to uh, this dude, Kiefer, Kiefer Kiefer's room. I want to go to this dude's room because this dude is going to be, well, I mean, you can go to anyone's room and they will all give you a special gift upon talking to them, which is what I desire. Hello, my friend, you are my new friend. I am Kaifer, Prince of Vestar. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. This is a playable character from Dragon Quest 7. I have that on my notes. I don't, I've never played any other game except Dragon Quest 9. Or, well, I played 11, but since that never existed when this came out, that does not come into the equation. But yeah, I, I've only played 9 and 11, so. 7, 8, 9, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I've never played. Uh, it doesn't matter. Ah, yes, I have a gift for you, Din. Din receives a set of Kiefer's clothes. I was torn between the caviar and the lobster. May I suggest the French onion soup? But in the end, I settled on this. We have different tastes, after all. I am sure that is the case. Every one of these special characters, upon first talking to them, will give you a piece of their outfit. Every one of these dudes has a really unique set of clothes. Uh, some have more than others, others have more than others. There are some s costume sets, they're called costume sets, that have shirts, boots, gauntlets, headbands, accessories. There's a bunch of different things, uh, basically, that hits them all. Hats, armor, gauntlets, pants, shoes, and some only have 
shirt, pants, and hats. It, it basically depends on the, the, the whoever you're talking to. Again, I will go far more in depth on this later, but essentially, uh, by talking to them, you do get a fairly nice piece of equipment, Kafer's clothes, a scarlet suit once worn by Prince Kafer. And you will see, it is very nice equipment for this stage of the game. It went, if I equip it, it'll boost me up essentially like 30 points, 69 up to 93. I will equip it and I look rather dashing, I will say. And for this specific episode, I will allow myself to get one piece of clothing for each of our dudes that thematically look relatively appropriate for their characters. So, Kiefer is going to be the one who gifts Din a bit of equipment. And then next up, we have Charles. And Charles is going to get clothes from a character called Borea. And Borea is a mage from Dragon Quest IV. Very long time ago, very long time ago. But I will gladly take his a bit of apparel. He is a very old, ancient, wise mage. I know nothing about him except for the mage because I read his Wikipedia entry. The much more powerful wizard Boya, who teaches the Sav Sarevna, the Sarevna Elena of Zamos, Z Zamof. Zamoxva is I. You need way more better easily pronounceable names because I had a stroke doing that. Perhaps I give you gift for to represent kindness of people of Zamos. Yes. Thank you for your robes. Undoubtedly, it is of no rival for in at Zalingrad, but this is Aaron's in is also very well. The dude is nearly incomprehensible. He has an extremely thick accent. Charles, I am going to have you to equip this wonderful thing. I can replace your robes with something way better because Borea's robes, a cloak that once covered the shoulders of the sorcerer Borea, is fairly nice. Gives me nine extra points of magical might and 15 more points of defense, which is fairly good. Equip that. Very nice. It is essentially a way better version of the silk robe, which is pretty cool. He looks incredibly stylish. Thank you for your robes, Master Borea. If I ever play your game, I will treat you kindly and not hold your incredibly thick accent against you. The next one up on the list is going to be Nuts. I am going to go and visit the person most suited for Nuts's tastes in apparel, which is, where are they? Let me consult the list. Nuts is going to get clothing from a person called Maribel. Maribel, I believe, is a playable character from Dragon Quest VII. Also the same as uh, Kiefer, so Din and Nuts, which is thematic in the fact that they are the only two brain cells of the group. I suppose you were so keen to reel me in here because you knew I was Maribel, yes? Daughter of the richest fisherman ever? Wow daughter of a really rich fisherman. This inn is shabby, and you're a terrible company. I mean, you never say a word. Yeah, well, that's because I'm nervous around pretty women. Well, not really. I mean, I'm a celestial, and you'd be blessed if I ever took an interest in you. But I don't, you know, swing the mortal way, as it's said. But anyway, you may as well have this. Din receives a set of Maribel's clothes. You should know that I'm not in the habit of giving presents to anyone, so consider yourself lucky. Thank you for giving me your spare clothing. I will treasure it always. And by treasuring it always, I mean give it to Nuts immediately. Nuts, I need you to have a way better dress. Oh, the magical mending goes down, but that's unfortunate. It's not that unfortunate. Maribel's clothes, a one piece that was worn by Maribel, which is fantastic. We lose only three points of magical mending, which is pretty good for, what is that? 30, 20, 24, 24 bits of defense, which is pretty fantastic. And it looks way better for a priest such as Nuts, which is something I will gladly take. Everyone will look a lot more stylish. And this will allow me, this, it, it just makes uh, things a little bit easier on me for armor because I won't have to upgrade my equipment for a hot minute. Or at the very least, my armor slot because we still have to deal with stuff like boots and gloves and headbands and weapons and everything. This is just a tiny, a tiny little advantage I'm giving myself that's unnecessary, but I care about the aesthetics way more than I care about making encounters uh, that much easier. So that's fine. The last person, of course, last but not certainly most not least. Man, I don't 
have good words today is, of course, Bolts, our lovely thief, Bolts. She is getting clothing from a character called Jessica. We're going to Jessica's room. Oh, my God. They were roommates. Jessica, I need your clothing. Give me her clothes, Jessica. My thief will take it otherwise. Look at her. She has got uh, pigtails, which is cool. Hello, Din. I am Jessica Albert from Alexandria. <gasps> I heard about your library. Oh, my God. That's... I heard, I heard, it's only a tiny village. You're probably thinking about the more famous Alexandria with their big library. Oh, you really might want to change the name. You're riding off of the bigger one's coattails. You probably haven't heard of it. I've heard of the bigger one, yeah. Anyway, like I said, it's good to meet you. I uh, brought you this if you want it. Din receives one of Jessica's frocks, which is cool. It doesn't really fit me anymore, so, I mean, I haven't put on weight or anything, but, well, you're welcome to it. Jessica is a character from... Dragon Quest VIII, the game before this. I had to read my notes because I cannot memorize four things, evidently. But that is fine. Bolts, you are the next and the last and the greatest in terms of apparel. This is Jessica's frock. It can only be worn by the female persuasion. A delightful decollete dress donned by Jessica. It looks interesting for bolts we might change this one if we get better equipment but for right now it's not terrible it's a frock which is cool they look way more stylish everyone looks incredibly flamboyant and i love this way more than my training tops and leather dresses everyone looks way better way 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 better so yeah, that is essentially the lowdown of all of the characters. You got four pages of characters that you can talk to to get a bunch of different items. But for the vast majority, when you talk to them the very first time you interact with them, they'll give you a, a single piece of apparel. Usually, based on what I've seen and researched, it'll be a bit of chest armor, but a lot of other characters have different items to give, like hats or gloves or boots or pants or what have you. A bunch of different sets for their costumes. And the way to unlock them, the first thing to do is just to talk to everyone. That'll give you a bunch of different equipment and items that you can pick up. And the next is to talk to them on your birthday. So I can show this off very quickly. I think I can hope I think I might be able to show this off if you go into the profile settings and you change this option here, your birthday. Uh, what's today? Today is January 5th. I always, <laughs> I record things basically the day before, essentially, because that's just how I do things. It's the 5th. So I'm going to change my birthday to today. My age is a secret. Never you mind my birthday. Never you mind. Right, I'm also, my title is officially Glitter Guy. My speech style is that of a demon king. And my, my thing is, I'm Din Glitter Guy. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that's me. Uh... I rule over the realm of Angel Falls with an iron fist. That is, that that's me. That is me, that's me. So, uh, right, I'll uh, go to Borea because he's on the first page. Just because I hope I can show this off because we've already talked to him. But yeah, you can talk to them normally the first time you get them and you can talk to them on your birthday to get another piece of equipment. Are you gonna give me something? I am now traveling for re four to recuperate myself after trials and tribulations with safeguarding the Sarvina Alena. Today is the day of your birth, Din, then I must give you a bestowal. Din receives a brilliant replica of Borya's bouffant and a birthday cake. Now you are one with more year. You must try to excess your achievements until yesterday and grow more stronger still. Is Godzilla all right? I do not know, which is fine. Again, you can literally just go into your profile, change your birthday to the current day of your playing, talk to these people again, and get a second item. It works for all of them. It is pretty fantastic but the extra items from that point on gets a bit more tricky to get because some of them will require you to talk to them as a certain vocation. We'll get to that. Essentially, you can change your vocation at All Trades Abbey. We'll get to that in the next episode, but don't worry about that. And some other ones, you're going to need to fully upgrade your inn, which is going to be a massive pain. It involves essentially connecting to another copy of the game and essentially, if you're familiar with Pokemon, mix your records. You're essentially going to need to bring one character over to the other time into your main game 30 separate times, which is a problem. I'm doing, again, more research into it myself at the moment. Uh, a more comprehensive video will be coming about that. 
So, Charles, where is, what did you, did I get a hairband? I did, look at this. This is a Boya's a Buffon, a silvery shock resembling that of the sorcerer Boya. This is essentially a mask. So each one of them, each of the characters have a bunch of different like unique head hairstyles and appearances. Essentially their masks are either going to be, you know, like their hairstyles or beards in this case, which is good for defense and magical might. I'm not going to equip this permanently, but I will show it off because I think it's hilarious. I can essentially turn Charles bald and give him a beard, which is hilarious if you're a fan of that kind of hairstyle, but the other hairstyle fits Charles way, way, way better. So I'm only going to allow myself to have the chest pieces, not the actual helmets, because as awesome as it would be otherwise, I am not going to make the game extremely easy by giving myself such a massive advantage. The clothing alone is already advantage enough. So, birthdays in expansions, talk to them as certain classes, talking to them in general, talking to them on your birthday. That is how you're going to get all of their equipments, which is perfectly fine and reasonable. I'm going to rock these clothes for the foreseeable future because I, it's just everyone has their unique look at this moment in time. And I care about the aesthetic more than anything else, which is absolutely fantastic. So that, that, was, that was DQVC. That was the online essential component of Dragon Quest IX that will allow you to get incredible items if you want to waste the time and go and talk to them. Do some research into how to connect to those fan-made servers or just wait the many, many, many months it'll take for me to put out that video. I need to get way further in the game before I can actually do stuff about that, so keep an eye out after the game ends and we can focus more on external meta knowledge about the game. There's a lot of stuff that goes into all of the research and details for this, and I try, I really, my goal is to make it as comprehensive as I can with the resources that I have and make it as accessible for the people at home who may only have certain things. So I have to do a lot of research. I have to focus uh, on finding a lot of, I have to comb through a lot of ancient forms from over a decade ago, some of which are exclusively in Japanese and I do not speak that language. So I have to muddle through with online translators. It's a pain that only I have to worry about. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll talk more about this later. In the next episode, this was a relative half an hour, Jesus. It, it's essentially, it's a shorter episode just because I wanted to talk about DQVC because it's technically available to you at this point in the game. So on the next episode, we'll actually be going to All Trades Abbey to continue on the main story. So if you enjoyed this tiny little touch, uh, info drop fed, drip fed, informational exposition, expose, I can't word today. I need to shut up about this, uh, long forgotten defunct kind of supported relic of Dragon Quest 9 from ye olden days drop a like i know my speech has been pathetic and but hopefully hopefully our dudes look a little bit better so i mean we got some new styles and that's all i care about so whether you watch this episode for 30 seconds or the entire thing thank you so much for tuning me on this completely optional episode i really appreciate it if you want to see more of this drop a like and maybe it'll inspire me to get those videos out a bit sooner because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So with that, I'm going to leave you here. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And whether you watch for 30 seconds, I'm doing the outro again for 30 seconds or the entire thing. Third time. <laughs> I can't end these episodes because I'm terrible at closers.